Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have a lore video for you guys, and this is a GTA 4, but also technically my first GTA 6 lore video. Now before you click off this, this is not some clickbait garbage, I promise you this. And it's not some stupid speculation with no basis. I have proof that one character by the name of Jerry Kapowitz, a minor but important character in GTA 4, will appear in GTA 6. I am 99% certain he will appear. And if he doesn't appear in GTA 6, Rockstar will be violating their own lore. Don't worry, I have proof to back up everything I'm saying. Now it's important to understand that GTA 4 and GTA Chinatown Wars and GTA 5 and the new GTA game, which probably will be GTA 6, are in the same universe. The 3D universe is GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, Liberty City Stories, and Vice City Stories. These games are in a separate universe, and while there may be easter eggs pointing to those previous games, you will never see characters from the 3D universe appear in the HD universe. I know some people will say Laszlo, but there's no proof that Laszlo in GTA 5 is the same Laszlo that you heard in Vice City on the radio. But now that I have explained the universes, I believe that we have our first conform confirmed character in GTA 6 besides Jason and Lucia. Now we know Jason and Lucia are the main GTA 6 protagonists. This is confirmed after a Hacker League GTA 6 gameplay and its location last year. We know that it's in Vice City. We don't know if it'll have more cities besides that, but we know Vice City is the main location. Vice City is in the state of Florida in the GTA world, and it's based on Miami, how Los Santos is based on Los Angeles, San Fierro on San Francisco, Las Venturas on Las Vegas, and Liberty City on New York City. Now then, who is Jerry Kapowitz exactly, and why will he appear in GTA 6? A lot of people kept mentioning what GTA 5 characters will appear in GTA 6, but they forget that many GTA 4 characters could appear in it that didn't appear in GTA 5. So because GTA 4 is the same universe as the new GTA game that's coming out, you could see characters from GTA 4 that we didn't see in GTA 5, in GTA 6. And you've seen GTA 4 characters actually pop up in GTA 5. Perfect examples of them are Johnny Klebitz, you had UL Paper, and you had Rocco Pelosi, and there's even more. So who is Jerry Kapowitz exactly in GTA 4? Jerry Kapowitz is a homeless background character that we see in two cutscenes in GTA 4. One in the base game with Nico, and the other at the end of the Ballad of Gay Tony with Luis. But why would a random background character appear in GTA 6? It's for this reason. Let's take a look at his first cutscene. Always trying to run you down, huh? Hey man, can I borrow Get that job, hey, you deadbeat crackhead! Just a little change, man! Man, hey, where do these people whoa, get up? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like I'm gonna pay for their drug habits. Well, say something! You are so fucking laid back! Moron! Come on! Want some? Good. We walked all the way over here so you could snort coke? No, listen! Ah, that's better. Huh? That's better. Man, Michael gets the good stuff. It's got some laxative in it, though. Gives you a stomach problem. <laughs> nice detail. So he gets harassed by Vlad, but he appears in the final cutscene in the Ballad of Gay Tony. Luis bumps into him, and because of this, he finds something very valuable in the trash. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Shit. Sorry, Pops. <laughs> oh. Come on, get up. Get up. Uh, you okay? Yeah, thanks. Take care of yourself, okay? Stay away from idiots like me. Fuck you. You always have to make a scene, don't you? Yeah, I know. It's a real problem with me, you know? I wish I was more like you. Subtle, shy, retiring. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Jerry Kapowitz was the one who finally got the cursed diamonds in the end. So what is the story with the diamonds exactly? The first time that we see the diamonds are in the intro to GTA 4. The cook is hiding them inside his cake mix. Later on in Frosting in the Cake in the Ballad of Gate Tony, Tony Prince tries to buy these from the cook, but the deal goes horribly wrong. 
You got the money? Sure. Right here. Then, then I'll get the ice. Hold on. How you feel about this, bro? I think I need another fucking line, okay? It serves me right for leaving the party with you losers. Shut up, idiot. Tony, we cool? Ugh. Let's just get this over with. My head is killing me. My life has been reduced to this bullshit. So no, Luis, we are a long way from cool. But for right now, let's just see what the chef has to say for himself. Yeah, that's what I think. I agree. I got it, por favor. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, all right. This is them. Mm, mm, mm. These are great. Mm. They're great. But uh, two million. You had your head in the oven? Mr. Tony, I have what they tell you, perfect clarity, beautiful clarity, well cut, and a shitload of carrots. What do you expect? <gasps> Tony, they're gorgeous. Mm, just like you. <laughs> hey, come on, can we do a handover, please, and get out of here? This is too much. No. Ignore him. He's probably been up all night with some bimbo. Tony. <laughs> You're a chef. Welcome. Yeah, I have uh, a line on some kitchen supplies. How about I throw that into the equation? What's the price? Look. Here's the money we agreed upon less 10%. Just give us the ice. All right, all right. Hey. Tony, can I hold them? Oh. Thank you. Uh, thanks. <coughs> oh, shit, Tony, oh. we out of here. Come on, let's go. Kevin, take him to the club. And don't fuck about, okay? Luis eventually finds out where the diamonds are and ambushes the deal in the museum. He gets the diamonds back. However, this turns into an even bigger mess because Bulgarin finds out that Tony Prince and Luis bought the diamonds. Show and tell, let's see some money. Of course, no problem. There it is. Beautiful, huh? Unmarked bills. No history, no need to launder. Good. Nico, show him the stuff. Get in there, Maury. Isaac, look at them. Gorgeous, huh? Like condensed money. Isaac, these are great. Oh, rest of you motherfuckers want to die? And Do that's Luis. Stupid, okay? Fuck you! Just get the shit, man. Come on! Bulgarin accuses Luis of trying to rob him and tries to have him killed. Hey. Yeah, what's up? I'm here. Uh. You're in position. Do you see a box in front of you? Yeah. Open it. Have you opened it yet? No, give me a sec. No. Okay, I'm here. Do you recognize this man? Shit! I believe you parted with him in a diamond deal. Yo, what the fuck? Is this the guy we bought the ice from? Yo, we just got some rocks off him, okay? Look, listen. No, you listen. I offered you an opportunity, yet you were plotting against me. Yo, I know shit about those rocks. But I believe it doesn't matter. I will do everything in my considerable power to drive you and your faggot master from this earth. Goodbye. Oh, shit! Fucking great! However, the situation gets even worse right after this. What happens is Gracie is kidnapped and Tony Prince is forced to pay the kidnappers by the Ancelottis. Trouble. The pile's got some serious cash. And he pissed off Gerald. That's reason enough for me. Well, they better pay quick. I hate to think of the fight she'll put up if you try to cut her fingers off. Nico and Packy try to get the diamonds, but Bulgarin ambushes it once again. You all right? Yeah. Bastard didn't hurt you, did they? She can't speak. We got a gag in her mouth. Give her back, you animals. She suffered enough. Hand over the stuff. Hand over Gracie. I'm here for you, sweetie. Hand over the fucking stuff. All right, calm down. Both of you. Oye, we put the ice in the middle. We walk back. Then, you send over the girl. We leave, and you pick up the stuff. And um, if you're wondering why Come Luis and, to me, and Tony are picking up Gracie and not Ancelotti, it's because Ancelotti doesn't want to pay. He doesn't even have that good of a relationship with his own daughter, but he's forcing Tony to actually pay uh, the ransom. So now Tony's $2 million in debt again.
Now, here we go. This part, this is where it's gonna get crazy now. Remember this guy? Mr. Bulgarin, the guy that Nico worked for in the Adriatic. Nika Bellic. How is it? That whenever something is stolen from me, you are not far away. I have never stolen anything from you, Mr. Bulgarin. This man, the big pedic, and his Dominican bitch, they stole my diamonds. And you have been trying to rob the thieves to rob me. Cancha is... I don't care what you did to that man, but we ain't leaving here without them diamonds. But the biggest, most important part is right here. This is the last time that we see the protagonist ever hold the diamonds. One of Bulgarin's guys refuses to give it to Nico and Packy and drops it on top of a dump truck. Give us that fucking ice! You're trapped! We'll let you go if you give them up! <laughs> I'm screwed either way. If I don't give you the diamonds, you kill me here and you take them. I do give you the diamonds, Mr. Bulgarin kills me later. I don't nobody having them. Screw all of you. And that's what happens to the diamonds. Lleva no isto. You selfish piece of cock sucking shit. Take out the last of Bulgarin's men. Okay. Now at this point, the diamonds are seemingly lost until Jerry Kapowitz finds them. So what happens exactly hereafter? Well, there is an epilogue to this. It's on the radio after you finish the game. Weasel News. Dumpster diving can make you a millionaire. You'd never believe what people throw out in the trash. That's what homeless Vietnam veteran Jerry Kapowitz thought when he found a pouch of diamonds in the city dump. Initial appraisals estimate the pouch of diamonds to be worth about $2 million. Mr. Kapowitz won't be homeless for much longer. He plans to use his new wealth to open a gun shop and liquor store in Vice City. Mike Whiteley, Weasel News. There is also a news article on the Liberty Tree. Uh, let's actually read it right now. The title is Bum Diamonds. Bum hits the, hits the jackpot. Uh, finds diamonds um, sleeping rough. Uh, sta uh, staff writer. A homeless Vietnam veteran, Jerry Kapowitz, has stumbled upon a haul of diamonds valued at over $2 million. They were in a small pouch amongst the rubble and trash at the Liberty City dump. Mr. Kapowitz had been living near the dump and, and surviving off things he salvaged from there. Before this, the best thing I found was a TV, and that didn't even work, he told reporters. Mr. Kapowitz plans to take his newfound wealth down to Vice City, where he will start a gun shop and a liquor store. There are real men down there, and they need real guns and liquor in one convenient location, Mr. Kapowitz is ownership of the diamonds was immediately contested by over 100 people. Mayor Choa decided that it would be impossible to verify the claims, so allowed Mr. Kapowitz to keep all the proceeds from the diamond sale. The diamonds are valued at around $2 million and over, and Jerry was allowed to keep it because no one claimed it. But that, that number, $2 million, we have heard it before, haven't we? The sh chef charges the same amount when he tries to sell Tony the diamonds. I agree. I got it, por favor. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, all right, this is them. Mm, mm, mm. These are great. Mm. They're great. But, uh, two million. You had your head in the oven. Mr. Tony, I have what they tell you. Perfect clarity, beautiful clarity, well cut, and a shitload of carrots. What do you expect? <gasps> Jerry took these diamonds and used them to open a gun shop and liquor store in Vice City. At least he invested it. Smart man. The diamonds are going to set him up for life. And remember what Nico says about the diamonds. Fuck, fuck, fuck! All that trouble for nothing. Kidnapping the bitch, holding on to her, fighting through them damn Russians, all of that for jack shit. Look on the bright side. At least you got to meet Gracie. <laughs> Screw that. I got close to knocking her teeth out. That was about it. We ain't got shit now. Maybe we was gonna have to give up them diamonds to fucking Ray Bacino, but we would've got a payday. Now we ain't getting shit. Yeah, but there is no guarantee we would've made any money out of those diamonds anyway. I've got the suspicion those were the ones Ray Bacino got me to handle a while back. They're bad luck. Me and some biker had to try to sell them to a diamond dealer, and it turns into a blood bag. That was when those friends of Gracie's must have gotten there. Stolen from you, did they? No. They stole them from the guys I sold them to. Shit. 
these diamonds have been trouble since Ray first made me take them out of a trash can for It's good they are on their way to a landfill somewhere. Best place for them. The population of Liberty City would have been higher if we had. You might be right, Nico. Whose fucking diamonds were they anyway? They're not Ray's, I can tell you this much. Maybe they belong to this homosexual man, Gracie's friend. Well, I don't know, maybe to Bulgari. Bulgari? He the motherfucker who busted up our peaceful hostage peaceful exchange? Peaceful hostage what exchange. What Christ's name went on back there anyways? Some time ago, I worked for Mr. Bulgarin in Europe, smuggling people across the Adriatic. The ship sunk. The cargo sunk to the bottom of the sea. I had to swim for my life. Bulgarin lost a lot of money that night and they needed someone to blame. This was one of the reasons I leave Europe and come here to Liberty City. And now he shows up claiming the ice belongs to him. What are the chances? Our paths crossed back when I was living in Holt Beach as well. My cousin and I moved up to Bohan to get away from him and another man called Dmitry Raskolov. That's a real shame. I can see you fitting right in down in Holt Beach, Nico. Probably a good thing you got out, though. Wouldn't have met me if you'd stayed, would you? When you put it like this, I'm one lucky motherfucker, Pecky. The diamonds are bad luck. Every time someone touches them, something bad happens to that person shortly after. For example, the chef steals the diamonds, hoping to get $2 million. He gets killed and his head cut off. Tony Prince tries to buy the diamonds, but his deal is attacked and, and Evan is killed. Then Nico and Luca's crew get ambushed by unknown assailants as they are picking up the diamonds from the garbage. Then, Luca tries to steal the diamonds, and Nico kills him. Johnny, after he steals the diamonds, goes to a deal with Nico. The deal is ambushed, and he steals the money that was meant for Ray. Ray goes after him, and his best friend Jim dies by Nico's hand on orders of Ray. Nico, on the other hand, gets screwed over and has to kill Isaac, the diamond dealer, after he threatens Ray. So the moment that Isaac touched the diamonds, it went bad for him too. And then Ray Volgarin tries to kill uh, Luis and Tony, thinking they robbed him. And then Luis has to give the diamonds back to Nico, after he and, and Packy kidnap Gracie. Then the exchange gets ambushed by Bulgarin, and they lose the diamonds again, where eventually Jerry gets them. And honestly, Jerry is the one who deserves it, way more than everyone else who came in contact with them. The point is, every single time someone touches the diamonds, it brings that person really bad luck. I will have a whole video explaining all the bad things that happen because of the diamonds in the future, but here, I just want to focus on Jerry's story. Jerry, I am 99% certain, will be in GTA 6 because of this, and his gun shop will probably be in Vice City. He's not going to be a major character um, at all, but we may see him behind the counter in his gun shop. However, don't think that Jerry's story has a happy ending, because something really bad might happen to him in GTA 6. The reason is because even though everything seemingly went well for him in the end, he opened, you know, the gun shop and liquor store after all, there is foreshadowing that something bad will actually happen to him. Why do I think this way? It's not just because the diamonds are bad luck, but because of this. Watch these two videos side by side. Notice how the cook holds the diamonds and how Jerry picks them up. He holds them at the exact same angle that the chef did. Remember, the chef was thinking he would get rich by selling these diamonds. Jerry thinks he will be rich as well uh, now too. While at least 15 years have passed in GTA 4, we don't know what happened to Jerry because there's no word of him in GTA 5 on the radio or internet. But to be fair, GTA 5 is on the West Coast where Vice City is on the East Coast. Something bad may very well happen, happen to him and may be in store for, for Jerry in the next GTA. Again, I'm not 100% positive he will be in GTA 6, but I am 99% certain. If the next game is in Vice City, the diamonds were such a big plot point in GTA 4, and Jerry opens a gun shop in Vice City, I don't see why he won't make an appearance in GTA 6, even if it's very small. If Rockstar doesn't bring him back, even as just, just a gun shop NPC, then they really have hurt their own lore. But Rockstar did a great job here with, a t with the twist. A random homeless guy that Vlad scares off is the one who ends up with the diamonds in the end. They took a small background character and gave him a much greater story. That's how you expand on small character stories, by doing something interesting and unexpected like this, unlike a lot of other developers today. But that is that for this video today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do drop a like. It does help you to make more content like this. I am working on another lore video uh, right away after this, a GTA 5 lore video. Tell me, do you think I'm right? Do you think that Jerry will appear in the next GTA? Because I really hope so. It will be a direct tie-in from GTA 4. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.